I am so excited to show you guys today's puzzles. These came out in 1968 and I've never seen another puzzle like them. So these are the contour puzzles by Milton Bradley. The puzzle pieces are made of foam, so they're different heights. And then on the top of the puzzle pieces, it's like a topographic map where you have raised textures that follow the image that's on the puzzle. I think this is gonna be so interesting. So come in a little closer and I'll show you all of the details. So here's what the box looks like. It is super retro. Um, you can see how they have this illustration over here trying to demonstrate like what's going on with these foam pieces. It says, new all plastic raised surfaces give dramatic depth to finished puzzle. This is old enough that the contents were made in West Germany. That doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> and then here on the front, you can see how, again, they try to illustrate what's going on, but the box is not raised. Um, this is just a flat image. And then here is a quick look at what all of the sides look like. Um, not a ton of new information. And then here is the back and you can see how they released at least four of these. Um, I'll have to go online and see if they did any more besides these four. But here on the back, they have an actual photo of the puzzle, not an illustration. So if we open it up, um, you can see all of the puzzle pieces here. It looks super cool. The only puzzles that I've ever done made out of foam are Puzz 3Ds and they don't have this height difference. So this is a really interesting like new aspect to a jigsaw puzzle that I've never done before. I'll admit I was a little worried that since these puzzles are so old, um, the foam would be a little degraded and that as you picked up the pieces, they would just like crumble apart. But I'm like pushing down on this. It still feels really solid. It still looks like brand new. So if we look at this one, it's basically the same box design, even the exact same illustration right here. Um, again, it's just a different color, but everything else is pretty much the same. Oh, except look at what's on the back of this one. Now there are six different ones that they came out with. So this must have come out later than this one, because this one they're only advertising for. I'll share more about all these different versions um, at the end of the video. For now, let's see what's inside of this one. Oh, that's interesting. So they have different colored foam. So this one is more of like a teal color, and then this one is more of a light mint green. These pieces are actually like beautiful. I think that's so attractive. <laughs> Like, look at how fun this is. It looks like a toy. Yeah, this is like, it adds an extra color that you don't usually get with jigsaw puzzles. Okay, wait, I was editing and I just realized that this color scheme looks just like the crazy food photos from the 60s. <laughs> Does anyone else see it? <laughs> So what happened was a viewer named Ken got in touch with me and uh, sent me this puzzle. He's actually sold me a lot of vintage puzzles, so shout out to Ken. And I was like, that's so interesting. Um, I'd never heard of this before. However, the picture on the front is a little boring. <laughs> So I went on to eBay to see what other ones they had released and I found this one, which I thought was a little, I don't know, a little more colorful, a little more interesting of a picture. So I'm gonna start with this one and then depending on how it goes, I'll, I'll probably also solve this one later in the video. Oh no, these pieces took up more space than I thought. I already ended up with three pieces on the floor.
All right, that was a nice quick sort. It took me 10 minutes and I divided them up into four different piles. Our biggest section is obviously the sky that takes up like half the image. Then we have pieces with a little bit of the sky plus something else. Then we have all of the trees and these all have like a bumpy texture all over the pieces. Those don't go together. They just got <laughs> locked together somehow. <laughs> and then this is the other and miscellaneous category. And I will say as much as I was saying how like beautiful and vibrant these uh, blue pieces are, this part of the puzzle is, uh, oh, whoops, that was missorted. <laughs> uh, this part of the puzzle is, uh, a little dull, a little uh, vintage looking. They definitely could have cranked up a little bit of this saturation. So I'm going to get started on the puzzle in just a sec. But first, let's hear from today's sponsor. So today's video is once again sponsored by Brilliant. And let me just go off script for a minute here and just say that I am so happy that Brilliant continues to want to work with me because it means that this channel gets to be sponsored by a company that's all about learning and education. And it means I don't have to do like scammy, weight loss supplements and plans, which I have been offered and I always turn down. Like, <laughs> I'm just so happy that Brilliant found me and wanted to work with me. I think it is the perfect fit for this channel. So, okay, if you don't know, Brilliant is a website where you can learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. Like, if I hadn't told you all of that and I just showed you this footage, you would all be like, what is this new fun game that you're advertising? But it's not a game, it's just interactive learning all the way from basic arithmetic up to calculus and a lot of uh, specialty subjects on top of that. So did you know that interactive lessons are six times more effective than passive lessons like just watching a video. I mean, think about it. You're not gonna get good at puzzles by just watching me do a puzzle. Like you would have to go out and do your own puzzles. And with this, you get to do the math and learn the concepts every single step along the way. It's not just someone like talking at you for an hour at a time. I love that the lessons are broken up into smaller sections so you can really build it in as a daily habit, even if it's just like 15 minutes a day. So whether you're heading back to school and you need some extra help, or if you just want to learn new things about the world around you. Like they have lessons about AI, neural networks, statistics, like all kinds of stuff. Um, Brilliant is a great place to do it. So you can try Brilliant completely free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash Karen Puzzles. And then also the first 200 of you are gonna get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So, okay, I think it is time. Let's solve this puzzle. All right, these red pieces are just begging to be put together. Okay, here we go. My first contour puzzle pieces. Ooh, that is so satisfying. This is like a thick wooden puzzle, but times three. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet while I do this one. Just listen to the sound of the foam. Listen to that crunch. Okay, so now that I have a little section, we can see that these pieces fully just lock and grip together. This feels so solid. None of these pieces are going anywhere. So I'm gonna get started on these pieces. Let's go ahead and build the Eiffel Tower.
right, we're just under an hour into it. This has been so fun so far. Since the pieces are so kind of chunky, it really feels like a wooden puzzle where you put in each piece super deliberately. Like now that I have a bit of a structure to work off of, I can put in these one-off pieces. Oh my God, this is gonna be the most satisfying thing. Did you guys hear that? So uh, as you can see, this doesn't fully lock together yet. We have this kind of squiggly connector, which seemed to be uh, pretty popular back then. You know, you see it in a bunch of vintage puzzles. And I think because it's foam and the cut has to be fairly simple, um, some of these connectors are just kind of triangles, like they don't come in at the bottom and so the pieces can just come apart. And also the thing about this puzzle is you have the potential for a lot of false fits. Like since the pieces are foam, you can just kind of squish them in wherever you want. However, at least in this part where we have like an image, there is plenty of information both in the image and in the height of the pieces. So you can definitely tell if something basically continues where it's supposed to, or if it's a little off. I'm getting a little nervous about all of these blue pieces, but uh, for now, let's just finish off the bottom. And I am done. So that took me about two hours and 23 minutes. However, as I said, I wasn't trying to rush through it. This is the kind of puzzle where you sort of place every piece slowly and deliberately. So it's a little hard to show on camera um, how the actual like bumpy texture looks. I mean, if I put the camera all the way down here, you can kind of see. So here's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna go out into the living room where it is nice and sunny, and I'm gonna do the other contour puzzle. And then I will be back to compare and contrast and share my final thoughts and share all whatever info I can find about where these came from. So let's go do this puzzle. I didn't bother putting down any foam board because for once, these pieces are too thick to fall through the cracks in my table. <laughs>
So I'm 43 minutes in, I have done the entire sky, and I had a suspicion about these puzzles. You can see here how in this one I was losing a lot of uh, puzzle dust or like foam dust, and all of these pieces felt like they snapped together really well. Whereas in this one, it feels much looser, like I just touch it and this entire thing comes apart. So I think this puzzle has been done more times before, and I think the more and more you do it, the looser it's going to become. But I just time-lapsed this part because it's, it's pretty flat, it's kind of the most boring part of the puzzle. Now look at all of this that we're working with. Like, these pieces are just so beautiful. The texture looks so interesting. I'm so excited to work on the rest of this. Okay, am I the only one? I love these. I have never seen a puzzle like this before. So I'm gonna try to play with the lighting a little, see if I can show you guys all of the different reliefs and textures. Trust me, in person, it is so beautiful.
Okay, so this whole time that I was working on these, I was trying to figure out how they made this. So here's what I came up with. They must have glued this paper with the design on it onto the top of very tall foam, like wherever the tallest foam is in the puzzle. And then they must have had a mold that they basically smushed down on top of the foam. And that's what gave it all of these different heights. But usually with puzzles, you have a little bit of tolerance, even if it's just like an eighth or a tenth of an inch. With this, the mold and the image have to line up perfectly, and it looks like they got it pretty much like exactly right. So I still have so many questions, like how much of it was done by hand? How much was done by a machine? Who sculpted this mold in the first place? Like whoever did it, they created art. This is art. This is beautiful. So obviously, overall, I loved the puzzle, but I do have one critique, and that is why would you put the picture on the box like this? Why is it so dull? Like, I literally bought this second one because I thought this one was going to be so, like, flat and boring. But looking at the actual puzzles, this mountain one is actually so much more colorful and interesting than the Eiffel Tower one. Like, they tried to make it look like you could see the contours, but I just feel like it would have been way more successful if they had just put the image like as is on the front of the box, have it super saturated. <laughs> Did they not want people to buy these puzzles? Like this is not selling this puzzle. <laughs> so, okay, history time. I looked up these contour puzzles on uh, eBay and WorthPoint, and as far as I can tell, they only released these six that were on the back of the box. So here are all of those boxes, and remember, these came out in 1968. So then I noticed that they re-released the same puzzles, but with a new box design. On the sides of those boxes, it says 1969 and 1970, so really just a year or two later from the first release. So I couldn't find great photos of all of these boxes, but I think they only released these four uh, because these are the only four that are on the back of these new boxes. And notice how they're now printing them in color rather than black and white. And another difference, it seems like the boxes themselves are now perfectly sized to fit the finished puzzle, because you can see how it fits inside it, almost like a picture frame. Um, I also noticed that on the back of the box, it literally says that it comes pre-assembled. I have to wonder if maybe they had issues getting all of the foam to fully break apart, and so maybe this was easier to manufacture. Now, at first, I thought that the puzzles themselves were exactly the same because they are the same images, but I looked closer at the photos and I realized they're only using the standard piece cut. So if we look at the same exact section of this puzzle, you can see how the older ones, the ones that I did here, have a much more varied piece cut. So I think the new one would be a lot harder to put together, and I think you would have a lot more false fits. So, okay, this is yet another entry into the world of 3D puzzles. I've already covered Puzz 3Ds, um, I've also done the Seiko Quark 3D puzzles. There were those uh, 3D three-layer puzzles. And someday soon, I'm going to cover the mystery 3D puzzles. Oh, and there was also the Gradient Sphere puzzle. That counts as 3D. So how else can we make a 3D puzzle? What other options are there? <laughs> I have to collect them all. <laughs> so let me know down in the comments, what do you think of these puzzles? Would you try one? Uh, were you around in 1968? Do you remember these puzzles? And let me know if any of you can think of any other puzzles out there that are 
anything like this because I can't think of any. All right, so your code word for watching all the way to the end will be Paris. Happy puzzling and I will see you all in the next one.